In this video, I will show you the fastest way to set up your own native application, including AI functionality. And we're gonna use the latest technologies that we have available. So we're gonna use a tool called Create Expo Stack to quickly bootstrap our Expo application, our React Native application. Um, we of course use Expo because that's a recommended framework for React Native applications. And we're gonna also use a feature called API Route, which will allow us to run code in a server environment so we can make a request to fell.ai, which I found pretty cool. And we're gonna use the functionality here from the available um, APIs and models and we're gonna also use cursor for our editor so we can quickly create the boilerplate code for our application. Um, also, if you need more help, I run a platform called galaxies.dev, which is focused entirely on React Native. We have tons of great courses, we have tutorials and projects, so if you need any help with React Native, go check out galaxies.dev and our plus plans. Now, let's get started with Create Expo Stack. In my folder here, I will run bun create expo stack because bun is a bit faster than npm for me. What do you want to name this? Uh, bg remover. Uh, would you like to use TypeScript? Yes. Uh, we've detected bun. Yes. We want to use expo router because that's the latest and greatest way to do routing and we just want to have a simple stack navigation. Um, I will actually use Stylesheet, although native wind is pretty epic as well, and I don't need any authentication, and I don't need Expo application services for the moment. I also don't want to save this configuration, but here would be the string to use this configuration in a future project. So I was just using bun because it's a bit faster than npx. You see, right now it's already done. And I also added the cursor command to my CLI. So I can now just run cursor dash r bg remover and then it opens up my app. Cool. In a terminal, we can now go ahead with bun x expo, which is the command to start our expo application. You can now simply uh, scan this QR code with your device and your application will be running on your device, which is the Expo Go application. I, in my case, will actually press I because I have the iOS simulator and the Expo Go application on that simulator here available. So that's a bit easier for me. Okay, great. This is our homepage. Uh, maybe we can get rid of some of the information here on that index page. So. Um, Maybe let's just remove the link and the screen content and now it has no properties. So let's just add text home and add text from React Native somewhere. So usually um, usually cursor is pretty good at giving us recommendations. And here is our application. We also need to add three more dependencies to our app. So let's do this right now. We're gonna add the Expo image picker and the Expo media library. So simply run bun add with both of those. And then we also add the SDK for fell. So you can run bun add, fell AI serverless client. That's all the dependencies that we need today. Now, what I want is I want to generate some functionality. So I will press Command Shift I, which brings up this composer view. And the composer is really the magic here in cursor. I want to put in something like this. So it should create a screen that opens the image picker, display the selected image and show another button to process the image, which will uh, send it to an API. A result should be stored and should be available. And I want to use a modern UI. Before I run that, I just noticed that I also wanted to show you something else. So if you want to improve your cursor results, um, I highly recommend you heat over to cursor.directory and for whatever language or framework you use, you pick some rules. So I will just use these here. I hope they're the right ones. And then I go into my project and in my project, I will add a new file, which is called dot cursor rules. And I will just paste this in. So this is basically like giving cursor some context on the stuff that should be generated in my project. Cool. With that in place, let's go back here and let's run our command on the index file. So hopefully this generates a decent looking page. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, okay, also some styling, actually a lot of styling included. That's pretty nice. You could also look at the diff view in cursor, which is really quite cool. Uh, but in our case, it's going to be pretty easy. So I accept this, I save this. Um, now it can't find some text. So I would just go ahead and import uh, the text 
and there seem to be some other issues but the text should be pretty easy import from react native so let's just edit up here and cursor usually gives us really good code completion uh, then we have some typescript issue so we're setting an image uh, and again i can just tap through this and cursor is able to figure out most of the stuff that's not working uh, then we have our container with styles code container um, actually, I don't want this container. That is just a construct from uh, the template we used. So we should be able to run it like this. Okay, um, we have a button. Um, the button doesn't have any kind of text. So we could fix this and just say here, if I press command K inline, the button has no text and it should update that line accordingly. So I can accept this. And once it reloads, uh, it's still not showing anything because this is not how you use a button. Um, that is pretty bad for cursor today. Uh, include the title of the button. Okay, so this is where you need some sort of React knowledge usually uh, or React native knowledge because I know that the button has a title. Uh, or I could change this simply to a touchable opacity that will work as well uh, we would just have to add the import from react native uh, we're still not seeing anything probably because the button text is white who's giving this button okay actually the button text white should be fine uh, it's just not displaying our text so yeah problem is up here we're still using uh, a button and now we do have it okay not the greatest ui but i'm able to select an image and it's hopefully displayed here and we have our button to process the image okay and it returns something because we haven't connected this any further okay that's a good baseline for our application now what we need next is an api route because we don't want to call a model directly from our application so what we need to do now is head over to the expo documentation for api routes usually uh, cursor isn't really able to figure this out in a good way um, so I will do some changes manually. I want to set the output to server here and at the same time I want to add a new .env file in which I want to set my fell API key. Uh, where am I getting that key from? Well, you can just go to fell AI and once you're here you go into your account somewhere, you go into API keys and you add a new key call it whatever you want, create this, and then copy the information to your .env file. If you don't add expo uh, public something, this is going to be safe as it runs in a server environment as we now create our API route. So we're gonna do this at api slash process plus api.ts, which creates the new API folder and a file process uh, here. So if you go with the basic example from Expo, paste this in uh, and then try to make a curl request. We might have to restart our command line. Let's check. Um, curl against localhost. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's... Yeah, we need to restart this once because we updated our app JSON. Now with the reload, we should be able to get the right information. Oh, we do have the not found in here. Uh, that might interfere with our process.api. Oh, actually, yeah. I should probably not call it hello, but process um, plus API. It's a get request to slash API slash process, and then I get back hello world. So API route is working. We're not talking about deployment, so all of this is locally for the moment. However, now let's see how we can use our uh, background removers, I will use background and remove background, this one here. And to include it, we already added this one and now we need to configure fell. So we need to import it. Let's do this up here and then use the process env fell API key. This is now also becoming a post request as I want to post um, some image to this endpoint. So I will replace this and get, first of all, the body. So making this one here an async function. Then we get the image URI from the body. And then we're gonna try to get a result from fell. 
So what you see here is pretty much how it's done, but we can tweak this a bit. So first of all, I don't want to subscribe. I actually want to run something because this is not a long running process. We don't really need like the queue and the update stuff in here. We can just call run on the remove background. As input, um, I do have my image, but this is not a hosted image. This is actually going to be a base64 string. And I want to set the sync mode to true. That makes sure that we get the result. And then we can return it once it's done because that shouldn't take too long. Uh, additionally, cursor gives us the result here. Um, errors of type unknown. Yeah, let's just make this any for the moment. And also, if we return this, let's return uh, result.image.url. If you check out the documentation here, you will see that the result you get back is actually, where's the type, the schema. So this is the input, the props, and here's the output, which is has an image and a URL. Okay, so this is what we return and we can also define this if we want to as any for the moment. So this is our API route. Now we can go back to our index because now we can process the image. We are not calling um, this endpoint, but instead we're going to call API slash process image. I also want to make sure that with the image, we're not using a URI, but we're actually using a base64 string. So what I'm trying is first of all to um, get a base64 string from our image. Let's see if cursor can implement that for us. Um, no, actually, let's say, please use expo file system because I don't really like that way. Um, yep, that looks pretty legit. All right. So let's add the import to the top up here and then we convert the image. So we get a base 64. Um, we don't really need that function. However, well, thanks for generating it anyway. Um, okay, good. So this is our base 64 image. We want to post that base 64 image now to the API body JSON stringify image URI is our base 64 string. Then we get back the result at this point. Um, and let's check. Let's probably also add a little lock here. That's a good idea. Okay. So we're going to locking the result out. And we know that it's wrapped under result.result. .result. So if result.result .result exists, in that case, I want to set my API result to this. Okay. So we don't need that one. All right. Uh, looks pretty legit. Let's give this a try. So I'm going to reload my application. If you want, you can um, press command control Z here to bring up the development tools in the Expo Go client and then hit reload. Um, I hope it also rebuild our API route. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. So let's use this one. Let's hit process image. And of course, we get a problem. So I don't think in any of my tries this worked on the first try. Um, network request failed. That's interesting because network request failed usually indicates that we weren't even able to access our endpoint. So I will press J here, which brings up the JavaScript debugging tools, which look like the browser debugging tools. And I will also do a refresh again in here. Um, let's just check. Okay, our API is not called process image, but just API slash process. Uh, okay, that could definitely be a problem. So I want to make sure we reload that. Um, and then I will also press J again for my debugging tools. Now let's do this again. Pick an image, choose this, process the image. And we got another uh, error, but this time it seems to be something slightly different. So let's actually make the API route work locally with in the way we want it to do. We also have to update our app JSON. So we just figured that one out. So go into the uh, plugins and expo router here and add the origin. Uh, I will actually add something like galaxies.dev. This is only important once you host your API routes somewhere actually. So now I can once again just kill this and I use the clear command to make sure my cache is clear, but that shouldn't be an issue right now. So now at this point, the API route should be available and we should be able to select the image, process the image, 
it's uploaded to Fel. Uh, hopefully the background is removed. And once we got back the data, it should also be displayed. Um, actually it is. <laughs> actually we got back the result. It's just not displayed correctly. So my API result seems to be correct. Uh, only problem is that we're not displaying the API result in the right way. So if we have an API result, uh, we want to change this. So let's tell cursor display the result as an image. And then we should be able to update this. So now it's using an image component instead. And hopefully we do need some result image styling. Again, this just, just come in with a tap. So here we go. We have my processed image down here. And in about 50 minutes, We've now been able to piece together a complete native application that I could also at the same time now open up on Android and run on Android if I wanted to. Um, it's using one of the AI models and we used most of the code actually from, um, from cursor generated. We pretty much didn't write any functionality on our own. So here's the same app running on Android. I haven't tried this actually, so I don't know if this works. Okay, I don't have any image here, so that makes it hard. But usually if you run it on Android, you should see that it works exactly the same way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to mention quickly that I found the inspiration for this on the Dude Developers Digest channel. Really great videos about cursor and AI and many things related to AI coding. So go check that out. And also just want to mention again, if you need more support now with your applications, you can check out Galaxies uh, where we got many projects, tutorials and courses. And of course, also one on one support if you need it for your React Native application. Um, yeah, you can Google all that stuff and ask AI, but sometimes it's better to have a human. So I'm really happy to help out. And if you got any other questions, leave them down in the comments and let me know if you want to see more of these quick AI implementation videos. And of course, subscribe and like for more content. Oh, and by the way, here's a video about 10 React Native tips that you should definitely know about. So if you're now getting started with React Native, go check out that video. I think it's going to be really helpful for you. And I will, of course, catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding. Simon.